And it is not the first time it's, it's done uh, in the world. The Sigfox technology has been rolled out in over 50 countries around the world. All right. And as Liquid Telecom, very excited in bringing that technology into East Africa and into Kenya. Mm. Now, um, IoT is basically getting objects to connect to the internet and, uh, and send um, information to people so they can make sound decisions. And one of the applications that we have started working on and has already, in fact, already been deployed is what you mentioned around uh, smart sensors, uh, which are deployed uh, around the uh, Nairobi Nakuru Highway and the Nairobi CBD. And these smart sensors are basically um, uh, capturing information around air quality, transmitting that uh, live on the net. Actually, anyone can, uh, can log on uh, to the website and, 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 and see the air quality at different, a different point around the highway. Uh, these sensors have been developed uh, by um, uh, Code for Africa, and uh, the program is called Sensors.Africa, and we're very excited to have partnered with them because uh, this is a nonprofit, and as Liquid Telecom, we, have very, we are very excited to have uh, partnered with them because we have allowed them through our uh, just uh, launched um, IoT network in, in Nairobi and across the country to actually find uh, a practical uh, use case for what they're trying to do. All right, of course, Adil, we do know that this is going to be used uh, to, uh, I mean, uh, with uh, monitoring uh, cars, uh, dustbins, desks, soil, water, and a lot of that. But tell me, how do Kenyans stand to benefit from this business-wise? Well, I think the benefit will be uh, business-wise, but also for, for the ordinary Kenyans. If you look at the IoT, the use cases are infinite, right? They're really limited by the imaginations of people. The ecosystem around IoT is a very interesting one because us as Liquid Telecom, we are deploying the network. Uh, and then uh, for that network to work, we need uh, tailored solutions to uh, companies' problems or to uh, everyday citizens' problems like these air quality sensors. So take, for example, uh, farming. Farming is, a, is obviously a big component of the Kenyan economy and also uh, m most of the sub-Saharan uh, African uh, countries' economies. And farmers stand to actually benefit immensely from the possibilities of IoT. Uh, for example, um, flower farming uh, can benefit from having sensors which uh, control the humidity level and the uh, quality of air, which is under the, um, uh, the, the, closed, um, uh, the closed structures uh, for flower farming. If we look at uh, fish farming, for example, um, looking at the uh, pH levels and the alkalinity of the ponds, right, uh, through smart sensors that can transmit this information on a regular basis is very important to improve the yield of those farms. If you look at normal farming, uh, having devices which um, transmit information around soil humidity, pH level, um, uh, water levels in the tanks, irrigating the soil, uh, all of that can transform actually uh, several businesses um, and, uh, and obviously transform the, uh, as well the lives of of ordinary citizens. Uh, Adil, of course we know that Kenya is one of the countries in the world where the tech uptake has been really growing year on year with uh, huge numbers and we know that is by many many tech developers it's considered as a testing ground. But now tell me what are some of the challenges that are actually being faced by tech developers in Nairobi and how does this Internet of Things come in place to actually you know solve this particular question? Uh, that's a good point. Uh, absolutely. Kenya has been blessed, right? We're having a very vibrant tech community and uh, a very vibrant entrepreneurs who are trying to use ICT to solve everyday problems and, and hopefully create successful businesses out of them. And we have been amazed by the level of enthusiasm and interest that we have seen from the local ICT communities when we have announced um, our IoT network launch. Um, I think some of the challenges that these people have been having is just having a network, actually, because they are working on very creative and innovative uh, solutions for, as I said, farming or, or air quality or logistics or transport or smart metering. But all of that, they need a backbone network to be able to get their devices and their solutions to communicate this information to their customers. And we are very excited that we have actually uh, taken out this big bottleneck um, out of uh, out of the way, and we see uh, a very very high level of interest from these communities telling us, well, we uh, we can't wait to get your network where we are. We can't wait to get the, the IoT network across the country so that they can develop their solutions. 
Of course, uh, we do know that uh, analysts have come out arguing that uh, the Internet of Things can make life a lot easier, but comes at a rather high quote or is a bit expensive. Tell me, how different is this conversation with what you're introducing? Well, that's one of the key differentiators that the, uh, uh, this, that the IoT solutions we are bringing in um, actually offers our customers. The, uh, the network we are deploying in Kenya is a low band, low power IoT network. So the low power keyword is very important because the devices that we are deploying uh, don't require a lot of power. They actually require minimum power to operate and transmit their information. And this allows the devices to have a, span, uh, uh, a lifespan of 10 years or 15 years even which now get them to a very, uh, very low cost per unit and also a very low uh, total cost of ownership for the customers. So you can have some applications actually tracking um, all the logistics pallets across the country, for example, and they are in the millions. Or you can uh, get um, uh, devices tracking all the wildlife and the cattle in the country, to, to, uh, uh, which are in the millions. Because the cost of the devices is so low, it allows um, uh, very imagina imaginative and never heard of before use cases, mm. and, and that's the uh, that's the uh, one of the differentiators of the solutions we are bringing to the market. Adil, when you say the cost is very low, how much are we looking at? That's exactly what I wanted actually to say. I, I, actually, the devices can start as low as 100 shillings per device, uh, which is a uh, dollar per device, and the yearly connectivity per device can also be as low as. 100 shillings, uh, Kenyan shillings, or one dollar per year per device. So oh. you can you can imagine that the uh, that the cost is uh, is somewhat affordable and and allows again for these very imaginative and large scale uh, and large scale uh, use cases. Because that's the trick for IoT to really bring its promise uh, to transform uh, people's lives and, and and how business is done. It needs to be uh, at scale, and and we are very excited that we are able to bring the investments and bring in this solution, which can hopefully um, help in that.